Up here on the Open Alliance Show, 4481 Team Rembrandt is coming in to this episode. They had an incredible video from just a couple weeks ago, and they've been doing a phenomenal job on their Chief Tile 5 vlogs as well, too. Lots to cover uh, from this team. Updated on their uh, competition bot CAD models. You saw their alpha bot on just a little bit ago as well, too. So a lot of great things with that. But we're also going to be talking autonomous modes as they showcase their four-note four autos. They try to get even more as well, too. And talking about some of their driver automations as well. They're looking at scoring on the move, so can't wait to dive more into that and learn more about 4481. Let's hear about Team Rembrandt's coming up here on the Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. And here we are on the Open Alliance Show 4481. Team at Rembrandt's is back to showcase their incredible progress they had so far. I think this might be the most watched Open Alliance team that we've ever had for things. Your Chief Delphi thread that you've been doing, it's been absolutely fantastic. Tons of activity of what's been going on for it. Uh, but for those who d hasn't really kept up with what they've been doing, which you really should be, we're going to be talking about a lot of cool stuff. You obviously see the alpha bot right there, so we're going to be covering more about that. Uh, but deeper look into your autonomous modes. Uh, so much to talk about with automations as well, too. So we got two fantastic students who are going to give a much more in-depth dive on what I can give here in an intro. So if you don't mind, can the two of you introduce yourself and let us know what you do on the team? Yes. So my name is Faye, and I am in the strategic department. And I'm Mark, and I am uh, currently in the software department. So as we mentioned, there's so much to talk about uh, here today with your robot. Uh, we have your alpha bot there on the table. Uh, I love seeing uh, the completion progress your team has gone through uh, so far, but uh, we have to talk about where you are from alpha into your competition robot as well. So give us an update on what that progress has been and kind of what the future looks like for your team. Yes, so there will be some changes from the alpha bot to the, um, to the competition bot. First of all, we are making some slight changes to the, to the shampoo that will be uh, one extra roller uh, on the chamber, so that will make sure that the uh, death pot is removed. Um, it will also be a little bit less wide, so the node perfectly fits in. And um, it will be a little bit higher, so we can kind of shoot from a bigger angle into the, into the amp, and we don't have to stand directly against it to score. And we will make a change to the climb, and I can show it right here. This one, this was the old climb. It is uh, from a material that is used on ships as a ship hook. Uh, we experienced some problems with rolling it in and yeah, extending and rolling it in. And this will be kind of our um, new um, mechanism we'll be using. It will be a linear climbing system with a little bit of a uh, gap in it. The chain will get stuck in the gap and that will make sure that the robot will stay on the, um, on the same spot on the chain and it will not move. And of course, it can uh, extend and uh, get back to its original position. So in your testing that you did uh, with that change of climbers on there, were you having issues with like you not being able to grab the chain right? Or what made you want to really make that change? Well, this just kind of... Um, it's kind of a tough material, so it will get back to uh, its original position. And it will just, um, we want it to extend kind of, like it's gonna be like this. We want it to extend it to go up, but it didn't always want to go that way. And uh, yeah, with this gap in the climber, I think it will be a great benefit that, uh, that we will have if we use a linear climbing system. Oh, that's awesome. Can we uh, jump into your CAD? We had it up just a moment ago. Let's put that back on screen and talk to me about some of those changes uh, going into your competition bot. Uh, walk us through some of the key aspects. Yeah, so first of all, you can see on the side, you can see the, um, the new climber that is um, on the side of it. You can see that it also has like a little gap in between. So um, that's of course for the chain. You can also see at the chamfer, if you take a look at the chamfer, we can see that there is a extra roller. That's, uh, that's what I mentioned before, that will um, help to remove the death spot for the nodes. And um, I think that the rest was quite the same, but there are a few little details that has changed. 
for for those who haven't kept up as well, can we take a look at uh, on your CAD model uh, where the uh, note exits your robot out of your shooter real quick. And the one thing I want to point out is that you have those uh, sets of wheels that are only to one side. Can you talk to us more about yes. that thought process behind it, what you've seen in testing and why you're going that route? Yeah, so um, we saw that if we have a rollers only on one side of the um, on the outtake, the nodes will have a little bit of a spin. And that spin, so it kind of turns in the air. And that spin will make it easier for us to score into the um, into the amp so yeah if you if you only have uh, rollers on one side of the amp of, of the shooter the spin will make it easier to score in the amp that's really cool and once again make sure you're keeping up with uh, uh team rembrandt's uh chief delphi blog so you can uh, see all those updates uh, that they've been going through uh, anything else in your cad that you want to talk about or, or run through in regards to your competition robot um i think we mentioned the most important things so so when, do, when does the uh, process start to actually make those big changes? When are you looking at starting manufacturing for your competition robot? Well, we will uh, start this uh, coming week. We will start on making the changes. Yeah, that's the planning to uh, start this week. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing uh, what all those changes look like on there. Um, one of the other things uh, that I, I think uh, Team Rembrandt has really stood out for are your autonomous modes that you've been doing. You've done such a great job sharing your progress. So uh, take us up to uh, what autonomous modes you've been working on uh, and anything that we can showcase for that too. Yes, we, um, we're focusing on the four and five nodes in auto, um, reducing auto aim and um, a quickly intake and almost directly shooting. With uh, the line mats, with solid efficient lit, um, we are uh, aiming using the Ipertex. Um, we had some difficulties with the line mats because we unfortunately used the um, line mat OS to calibrate it, but um, it doesn't work for us. Uh, then we switched to photo vision, and um, now it works pretty good. But also, with um, um, reading where the robot is on the field. We also, we also have um, a video of the um, auto uh, we made uh, a few hours ago. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. It's a 400 auto. Um, we want to try the fifth one. It uh, missed the figure. There are some slight delays, but um, we are looking how to um, change those delays and fix them to make it faster and uh, be in a 50 minutes, 50 seconds. And, and how are you doing your autonomous? Are you using a certain type of program or anything like that? Uh, tell us uh, how you are uh, actually doing your customization for that. We use um, FC ball planner. Um, with those, we make the balls. And um, then in the code, we say, um, if he's on the place, he can intake, and um, when he goes back, during going back, he can shoot. Uh. Um, what other autonomous modes have you been experimenting with? The four node is definitely impressive. Uh, is it uh, just different locations of picking up, or have you tried doing uh, different methods as well? Like, are you scoring in the amp at all, or anything like that too? We are um, just gone with the auto because we are um, want to focus on other things like uh, look. Yeah, um, we wanted to uh, focus on other things first, like a loop table to aim automatic. Um, but uh, after that, we uh, started with auto like a few days ago. And um, um, right now we have the Ford Note, which we want also to focus on um, other places on the field, like the three notes at the beginning. Um, also on the podium, the first video we saw was um, we skip the first note from podium and uh, directly go back to the middle of the field and we'll also um, some extra autos that are more focused on the middle of the field. One of the other things as we uh, start to wrap up on this is that uh, your, your drive team has gotten a lot of practice uh, over the, the course of the last couple of weeks on there. And I think that's one of the great things is seeing all the updates uh, of what you're doing for that. So um, I, you wrote down a note uh, when we're going to show off drive team automations. What does that mean exactly uh, for your team? Uh, and can you talk a little bit more about maybe what your team has discovered amongst practice so far too? Yeah, we uh, started practicing a few days ago. Um, are we using a uh, table? With this lookup table, we can uh, auto aim on our speaker. Um, 
while driving. So if you press a button, it aims on the um, speaker and can shoot. Um, it works also in a different mode for the amp. Uh, if you press the button, it goes to drive automatically to the amp and scores there automatically. You can drive uh, by itself, but um, we thought it's easier to uh, do it automatically. The other the two most used things to make the, uh, to, that we use. What what speed are you able to do that at? Like, can you actually go full speed and, and fire, or do you have to go half speed, or what? Uh, for the amp, we use uh, right now uh, almost full speed. But, um, we are testing like one day, um, so we might chase that. So give us uh, maybe a couple, a couple next steps uh, for your team. So obviously you've been making fantastic progress here. Uh, what are maybe in the next week uh, or so, uh, what are you really trying to accomplish next? What are your main focuses? Well, um, yeah, of course we are starting with, uh, and we are have been doing driver's practice and also been doing human player practice. And of course the coming week we will be starting on uh, building the competition robot. So I think that will be one of our biggest focuses at the moment but also we are already thinking on uh, what we want to do in the matches so match strategy um, so right now we think we can do a five-piece uh, auto autonomous but um, we might not always do that one because we also have to have other autonomous so we can kind of um, change it uh, depending on the alliance we're in so we can kind of be compatible with other teams so, yeah, I think that's kind of one of our priorities right now. Last thing I want to ask you before we let you go is I want to talk about your Alphabot just a little bit more. What are some maybe key things that your team has learned uh, from creating the Alphabot uh, that you think would be valuable for other teams to know about uh, this year's game of Crescendo? Um, well, we kind of went into this season with the idea to make uh, a kind of uh, – Simple robot, we didn't want to go over the top. So um, we built this Alphabot uh, with simplicity in mind. And we have, um, yeah, we have uh, seen in the results that it works quite well. So I think that maybe um, the other teams can see that also simplicity is working this year and you don't have to go over the top to have good autos and good points. Well, Team Rembrandt, thank you so much for uh, hopping on with us. It's so great to see your progress on that. Make sure you're following uh, 4041's uh, Open Alliance blog on Chief Delphi as well, too. And wish you best of luck. This will be your last team time here on the Open Alliance show, but we can't wait to follow you through your competition season. Good luck, everybody. Yes, thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.